Hello, everyone. Um, I hope you have a good time today. I would like to talk about faith with you. Not faith in a religious way, but faith in you, faith in humanity, but above all, faith in science. Because I think science can solve the issues we are facing today. And if we work hard, we will be able to solve the energy issues we are facing today. So, what is the first thing that comes to mind when you're thinking about chemistry? That's a question I would like to ask you. Liquids? Well, yeah. That's a, that's a nice understatement, I would say. I think a lot of people will think about pollution. Like this. This is what the chemical industry looks like today. Some of you will think about carcinogenic type of molecules, things that mess up our health system. Maybe even some of you will think about global warming. Because, yeah, let's face it, CO2 is caused by the industry and also by chemistry. And because of CO2, we are having this global warming problem. So, one of the issues that we are having today is that the, the, the ice is melting. And we all can live with this, 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 this polar bear that is having a difficult time. But there is more, because also the weather is disturbing. So we, 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 have, we are facing more fires in woods because there is a, a lots of drought. Also the deserts are increasing and we are having very disturbing weather patterns which are resulting into very annoying um, hurricanes and all that kind of stuff. But there are many reasons beyond global warming because oil will not be here on this planet forever. That's, that's just a mistake we cannot make. At a certain moment, we will have to change. So natural gas, another thing that is a big problem. And we all know here in the Netherlands, maybe some people are from Groningen here. We, are know, we all know that there are earthquakes associated with that. And in the USA, they are having shale gas, which is giving a boost to their economy. But it also contaminates groundwater, which is not great either. And let us not even talk about um, uh, energy from, from nuclear power plants. Because we all know what happened in Chernobyl. And we all are familiar, especially the younger people in the audience, we are all familiar with what happened in Fukushima. And I, maybe you heard also a couple of weeks ago that the scientists finally said, OK, this is going to be the term how long it will take us to clean it up. It was about 40 years. 40 years, people, that's a hell of a time. By that time, I'm already old. Hopefully, I'm still alive. Um, so that would be something that we are very, very much worried about. And I'm not even talking about radioactive nucleotides, which are messing up uh, our, our planet for a longer time, because that will live on for centuries. So I think we all agree about that it will not be renewable, that we all have to go to different types of uh, energy consumption. So not using fossil fuels, right? So I think there is hope. When you ask me what is chemistry about, my opinion is chemistry is about life-saving drugs. We all live longer today thanks to chemistry. We have all these very fancy cell phones also thanks to chemistry because all these LCD screens that we are having. There is a lot of chemistry going on in that area. But also in our cars and even in our very uh, new clothing, all the colors, they're all chemistry. So we have to find a way how we are going to overcome this. And let's face it, the chemical industry still has a problem because most of these processes are all driven by thermal processes, which means that you have to heat it up. So you need to consume fossil fuels before we can heat up this uh, reactor that we are doing our, our chemistry in. But there is hope because there is renewable energy. And this renewable energy, we can now start harvesting solar energy, wind energy, and even hydro energy to start working in this planet. And then we are not polluting our atmosphere anymore. So, but what if I would say that we can make these life-saving molecules with solar energy? That would be a good thing, no? So that would really 
be a huge advantage for us to work on this planet. So if we can make these molecules with the sun, that would be a major advantage. But there is one problem. We are living here in the Netherlands. And when you go outside today, well, it was quite a miserable day. So it's, not, it's raining a lot of times. We're having a lot of clouds. And that is not, of course, helping the way. If we have to produce chemicals with the sun, we don't have the sun here, or not often enough. So nature has been able to do this. So if we look at nature, for example, they are able to drive in these places. And so because of the light, it starts to grow. So we have to think about how is nature doing this? Can we learn from Mother Nature to make the molecules that we are so much cherishing, that gives us the joy in our life? It, can we make these molecules in a way that nature is doing it? So let's try to mimic what's going on in nature. So it's a very complicated system, how nature does it. It has been many, many years before it has been uh, possible that it could do it. And actually, nature has these reaction centers. That's where actually the photosynthesis goes on. But around it, you see a lot of different molecules. And these are called antenna molecules. So the question we have to ask ourselves, why is nature doing all this effort to make such a complicated biomachinery to convert light into molecules in order to grow like the plant does? There are two reasons. The first reason is we all know how a rainbow looks like. You have different colors, and all these different colors have to be harvested. Well, we have different types of antenna complexes, and they can all have their own specialty, and they all have their own uh, uh, light color that it will harvest. And that energy is subsequently donated to the reaction center, where actually the reaction will occur. Now, the second reason why it has to do is because Photosynthesis is a very, very complicated system. You need a minimum amount of energy before it will be able to convert CO2 from the atmosphere, water that it takes up from the ground, and combine these two into making sugars to grow. So that process needs a minimum amount of energy. And if that energy is not there, it will just not go. It will lose that energy again. So why is nature so making it so complicated? Because it has to. Because there are places on this planet where there is not enough light. Let's think about Netherlands, for example. We are here today. And still these plants grow because it has this very complicated system. So there is one specific organism on this planet. It's a bacteria which is living eight meter, 80 meters below the level of the, of the Black Sea. And that little um, organism it doesn't see too much light. You, yeah, you just imagine 80 meters below the, the level of that sea. So there is not so much light. And so just to give you a ballpark figure of what's going on there, so it has 300 of photons, which is some kind of equivalent to a light package. So 300 of these photons per second. It can still sound to you that it's a lot. But if you compare that amount of energy to what a normal leaf from a plant that is just sitting out there at your window ledge, that will see 10 to the power 16 of photons per second. That's a one with 16 zeros. That's a huge amount of difference. And so for that little bacteria below the sea level, it's a matter of life and death. So if it cannot harvest all these photons, so these light packages, it will not just be able to live there. So can we learn from these? little organisms to make better reactors. So that's what we did at Eindhoven University of Technology. We have developed this type of reactors, which is like an artificial leaf. And actually, I have one here in my pocket. It's not bigger than the palm of my hand. So this is how it looks like. And what it does is very simple. So this is a piece of plastic material where we have dissolved some color in there. And that color is by accidentally red. And so it harvests all the energy that is falling onto it, and it will convert it into red light. And that red light is crucial 
for the reaction that is going on in the veins. So what we are doing is we are pumping chemicals inside this leaf, and that leaf will then convert, will take the energy from outside, it will use that energy to convert the chemicals, and then you have clean products coming out of that leaf. But it does a second thing. It also waveguides. So if you look at this leaf from this side, or from this side, you see that the edges are more shiny. So this leaf also waveguides, so it brings that energy towards these channels. And in that way, we can harvest much more energy, very similar to what that plant did. So you have these different molecules, you remember all these antenna complexes, which give that energy towards the reaction center. So this leaf does exactly the same thing. So when we were testing this outside on a cloudy day, a normal cloudy day in the Netherlands, I would say, um, we were kind of hopeful. When you look at it already, you can see, well, it will probably work. But what we saw there actually astonished us. It, didn't, it gave 40% more productivity than a normal traditional reactor. So, and I'm comparing to the same type of reactor with just no color in it. And then it works very well, because this one really harvests energy like a traditional leaf. So, in my opinion, we should have faith in science, because we work hard for you in Antwerp the University of Technology to make the chemicals of the future in a much cleaner way. But I have to warn you, we are not there yet. This is the prototype. There is still a lot of work to be done. So what I would like to ask you to have faith in my team, in myself, that we will work hard for this. And we hope that we can make this the plant of the future, that we can make the molecules that are f changing our life on a daily basis, that we can make them with solar energy in the future. And let's put a little bit more of dreaming here. So let's imagine in 10, 20 years, you're walking here in Amsterdam, or you're walking in a desert, or you're walking in a rainforest. There is no pharmacist open, and you're feeling not well. You take out a mini device from your pocket, and in there you say which symptoms you have, something the size of your cell phone now. And in that device, you also have this artificial leaf. So you type in what you're having, and out of that device comes a pill, a pill which is perfectly tailored to your own body weight, to your gender, maybe to your, even what you're allergic to. And it will give you the perfect dose that you need to feel better. That would be amazing if you ask me. So have faith in science, have faith in us, and we will work hard for you to make this happen. Thank you very much. Have a great day.